Hello everypony, it is I, Lightning Bliss, and I'm here to do a tutorial for basic pony vectors. Um, this is just going to be more or less a drawing exercise, and then I can tell you guys how we can vectorize your pony later. But with every vector comes the sketch to get an over idea of what your vector is going to look like, or puppet. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do a vector. So, um... For those of you who noticed, yes, I am on CS 5.5 Adobe Flash. Now, this is a much older version of Flash to this day and age, and they are uh, Adobe is no longer selling their products anymore, but you can still pay a monthly fee to use their products. Um, but if you don't have Flash, you can also do this in Illustrator if you want to follow along with me. Or you can also do it in Photoshop or Psy. Now, Psy is a... I think it's a free downloadable uh, art software that you could use, and a, a lot of my fr art friends tend to use it a lot, but I prefer Flash just because I feel like I have a little bit more control with the paintbrush. So that being said, or if you want, you could always use the handy dandy sketchbook, because that's normally where I start with all of my artwork anyway, even with vector artwork. But in this case, to make things more convenient, I am doing it on... Photoshop with uh, my tablet, which was given to me by Keyframe. <laughs> and as you can see, this is totally unscripted, so just bear with me on here. So, the first thing we want to do is to start with the head of your pony. We're going to do a mare three quarter vector image of a mare pony. But like every pony, we need to start with the head. If you don't get the head started and you start with, say, the body first, um, and you go into all that detail and put into the body and then you get the head wrong, then it was all work for naught. Always start with the head. A simple shape. A circle. So yeah, it's not going to be clean. And that's okay. You can erase it. You can adjust the line work. That's okay. In my case, I'm going to clean it up a little bit later. Uh, but yes, this is the circle. It's not a perfect circle, but if you want to adjust it, you can. I personally would like to adjust it just a little bit. You can erase it. You can try again. You can adjust it, or you can actually use an actual physical uh, circle tool and do it. But in this case, I'm freehanding it just to prove that, yes, this can be done by hand. So what you want to do is you want to find out where the eyes are going to go on the head. So uh, it's always good to mark your center line. So there's my center line. And actually I'm going to adjust my paint tool so it's a little lighter. There we go. So there's the center line. Here's the middle line. As you can see I'm a little scribbly because I'm still rough with the tablet. But there's the center line. All this is going to tell us basically where the eyes and those are going to go, but I want to readjust it a little bit more. There we go. So now we know where the eyes and roughly where the nose is going to go. Now that we got that down, let's get the skeleton or basic line structure down. We want to know where the neck is going, so the neck or the skull is going to be just slightly underneath, probably about, right about there. So that's just a line to tell us where the neck is going to go. Now we need the chest. Chest is just an outline of another simple circle. Relatively smaller than the head normally. And the interesting about, um, see, I want to, I want to do a quick comparison here. I'm going to make a quick sketch of a horse here. Um, so yeah, very rough sketch of a horse. you will immediately notice something about this horse image compared to Hasbro's pony style. Okay, there we go. Notice that the, the body of the horse is extremely long and the legs are pretty long too. The head is usually pretty longer as well. So yeah, you get the idea. We are not drawing a table. No, 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 no. And we're not drawing a horse. Now, normally a horse's rib cage is right here, and then you have the spine, and then you have the hips. But this is nothing like Hasbro style. We are not doing a realistic real horse. So when you think that the butt should be right over here, nope, you'd be wrong. It is actually a slightly bigger circle 
that overlaps the chest circle. Kind of funny, isn't it? So I'm going to readjust it a little bit. I want it to be slightly bigger than the chest circle, slightly just below the neck. And there you go. You have the butt and you have the chest. You got the neck and you got the head. I want to keep in mind, and, and I cannot stress this enough, when you first start out with your sketch, keep it simple. And if you're doing a sketch, be light with your line work because if you make a mistake, it'll be easier to erase in the long run. If you press down really hard, well, it's going to be harder to erase and it's going to rub your paper down when you erase. So keep your lines simple and light. And if you are using a tablet or an actual program like I am, well, then you could just delete what you did. So I'm going to do a file save real quick. So, so far, yes, so far we have the head, the neck, the chest, in the butt. Now we are going to line out where the legs are going to go. So normally the hip joint for a Hasbro Pony is right about here. And then we're just going to go eh, dot, dot, dot. There we go. So we know where the back leg is. Uh, we can assume where the other back leg is. It's going to be underneath. But look, I'm going to get the, the front hoops down first so we're just going to find the shoulder and it's going to be right there and we'll just line it down the again this is just a skeleton structure to tell you where everything is going to go so once you get that down we're going to connect everything together starting with the head and the neck so the base of the neck is going to start right about here and we're it's just going to curl down a little bit kind of like a half half s in a way, the neck is kind of going to be like an S. Kind of like that. That's what it's going to look like in the end. So that's basically what we're going for. It's kind of an S and an S and then connect everything. So we're going to find the, the lower chin and then we're going to connect it to the chest. So once you got that down, then I like to get the legs out of the way. The legs are like bells. They, they kind of spread out like a bell. Very, very simple. Narrow at the shoulder and then they spread out down towards the hoof. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the shoulder, bell it down. Find the shoulder, bell it down. Now we're going to connect them. The hooves are very curvy. They're not, they're not squares. Eh, eh. Nope, that's wrong. They're not this. Nope, they are this. Like a little bell. So that's what we got. We got a little bell here. Next, uh, we're going to find the hip or the, the curve. Actually, what I should say is we need to connect the belly first. So I'm going to make a few erase marks to tell me where everything is. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Okay. So now I know where everything is. I'm going to find the uh, belly. Now, because it's a three-quarter pose, we're not doing this because the, the back leg is not going to be overlapping the body. It's the belly that's going to be overlapping the back leg because we're looking at it from a three-quarter perspective. So find the line of the belly, curve it, and connect it where you may think the neck is going to be curving down towards the belly. So kind of like this. There we go. So now we got the belly lined down and you could just erase look mistakes you made right there. So now we got the belly line and the curve line. Now we need to connect the back leg. So the back leg, it's pretty simple. Imagine the circle, but then it kind of loops like an egg and then connects up to the belly. So if you were to ignore the back, it would kind of look like a little bit of an elongated uh, egg. But basically, yeah, it's an egg shape. Remember, keep your images simple. Don't don't overcomplicate things. Treat them like simple shapes. And um, next, we're going to find the, the hinge to the back leg. I might have overdone the hinge here, but that's okay. You, again, you can just go back and erase. And 
Yeah, see how I'm already uh, adjusting for a little bit of detail because my hinge is a little off and my skeleton is a little off. It's okay. This is just to give you an idea where everything needs to go. So I'm going to bell out the back leg, loop it up, connect. Voila. Now we have the back leg and I'm going to erase some mistakes I did. Do do do. And see, I don't like where the belly is right here, so I'm going to readjust it again. I'm also going to readjust the hip here. It, it, this is going to happen frequently. Remember that, uh, that pr even professional artists will redo an image over and over and over hundreds of times before they get what they want. There we go. That looks a little bit more balanced. I noticed that the head might be a little too big, so we're gonna shrink that down. There we go. See, even before I go into any detail, I want to make sure all my proportions are correct. And what I mean by proportions, I mean is the leg too big to support the body or too small to support the body? Is the head too big to, su to be supported by this? <clears throat> excuse me, by this little body. So yeah, after you made your adjustments, cleaned up a few of your line work, then you can uh, find the other legs. Basically, they're just underlapped. You want to adjust them. If you want to maybe have a little bit more interaction with, say, the front hoof, we can do that. Remember, simple lines. So in this case, I'm going to make the, the back front to curl up a little bit. Simple shapes. Remember that the hoops curl. Remember that it's smooth. Remember that the hooves bell out. See, I even made a mistake, so I went back and did it again. That looks a little bit better, a little bit more proportioned. And there we go. We basically have the body of the pony here. Just going to make a few more line adjustments. This, again, this is just the rough. You're basically getting an idea of what your pony is going to look like. And then you could clean it up later with tool work, tools like the line tool and whatnot, which I will show in my puppet. We're going to make Lightning Bliss, basically. Lightning Bliss, even though she is small, she proportion size, she is about the same average pony. Her head's just a lot bigger. So that being said, now that we have the body down and we have our legs the way we want them, make sure everything's tightened up or cleaned up, we can start adding some details. First detail I want to mention is to know where the chin ends on the head. So I'm going to erase this line, but not all the way because I want to have an indicator where the chin is. So right about there. Yeah. Now we need to figure out where the nose is. So the nose is kind of like a, uh, it's a very simple shape. It's like a curved oval or circle. So I'm going to make a larger version of it just for example. It's basically just a silly half covered oval that curves up and then it has a little nose. Simple little curved nose and then a curved mouth. And you can adjust this as much as you want. You can go look at actual House Bros references, but in a nutshell, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to paste it probably right about there after I make some adjustments to it. Might actually just want to redo it, which I think I'm going to do. <laughs> There we go. That's what I was looking for. Right there. Again, I would say that for me personally, the nose is the hardest to get because the nose is also the mouth. It, it's going to have the most, one of the most expressions. And if I don't like the mouth, then I get really, really frustrated. So yeah, now we have the mouth. 
I'm gonna put a little nose, a little mouth. And now we have that, we're gonna start with the eyes. Now the eyes are kind of anime looking and they're basically an oval. So we're gonna make an oval. And then uh, if you wanna add the eyelashes, you can add an extra line going outside the oval. Don't fully go around, but just go enough to where the eye line kind of lands at the front because the eye is facing forward. So that's where we're going to be looking. So the eyelash is going to go a little bit further down forward and end a little less in the back. In this case, we're going to make Lightning Bliss's eye, which is uh, not exactly an oval. It's actually a circle, a lot like what Philly's eyes have. So now we have a basic eye for Lightning Bliss. And we're going to add her one little eyelash right here. Why does Lady Bliss have this style of eyelashes? Well, to be honest, in real life, I don't actually have eyelashes. Um, it's kind of embarrassing. I'm not going to go into reasons why, but uh, I figured not to over-exaggerate on the eyelashes too much. But to express for females, it's good that they have eyelashes. Males don't normally have them. So there. Now we have the eye and the eyelash. So now we're going to go into the iris and the eye detail portions, which is basically a circle or an oval, depending on your standards. This is going to be the iris. This is where all the color is going to be. So this is the white. This is the iris. Now that we have the iris, we're going to add in the pupil. So now it's starting to look more like an eye. Gonna give that a little color. Maybe we'll give the uh, the eyeliner some color. If you want eyeliner for color, you can. This is just me telling you what what is what, and you can identify what is what. So there. Now now looks a little bit more like an eye. Uh, but it's like bliss. What about the the shinies? What about the the the, the colors? The circle? The eye? Uh, where the light uh, reflects off the eye? Well, we're getting to that. So yes, there are two types of eye shines, which is basically circles of where the light is bouncing off the eye. Two of them are just normal white circles. You got one big one that usually is at the top that overlaps the pupil and the iris. It's not going to be the best, but it's okay. And then you have a tiny little small one. And then for the other shinies, it basically overlaps just the iris alone. And they're basically lighter colors of what the eye color is. So in this case, it's going to be one here. And I'm going to go a little bit lighter than that. And one here. Again, you can just outline this. You don't have to go into the color details like me. I'm just coloring it for those who want to get an idea of what is what. So this is the first eye. And this eye, I, I'm going to shrink it down. Or you could go ahead and draw it on the head if you want, but it's good to know where it is. So in this case, whoa, already way too big. We're going to shrink it down to it's the right size. Somewhere right about there. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it just so we'll make my life a little easier. She is going to be cross-eyed though, but hey, let's have some humor in here. <laughs> so the eye on the other side obviously is going to be a lot thinner. And I'm going to I'm going to zoom in for you all so you can see it better. It's obviously going to be a little bit thinner. And it's going to be narrowed, might even be overlapped by the nose. Better wise, y'all get the idea. See, I'm going to adjust it right here. And yes, I know my line work isn't very clean, but this is just a tutorial. It's to give you an idea how I do things. It's a lot more cleaner than this for me. <laughs> but as you can see, I'm taking out the line work. 
and I'm cleaning up my lines. Yeah, and y'all are basically getting the idea. So now we have the nose and the eyes already starting to look like a pony, isn't it? Now we're gonna get the ears. Ears are pretty simple. They are not this. They are not this. They're more like curved, slightly oval triangles. Something along those lines with a little line going on in the center. In this case though, we're drawing lightning bliss, so her ears are gonna be a lot bigger. Again, there's no right or wrong way to doing this, but if you are going for the Hasbro style, well, uh, you need to be very aware of your lines and how thick they're going to be. In this case, this is a rough idea of what their style looks like. In a nutshell. So now we have the ears down for Lightning Bliss. We're going to give her some little hoof details. Excuse me. And uh, basically, now we have the body down. Yay! Oops. <laughs> so, to go into other details like horns and wings, well, a horn is relatively easy. And depending on what size you want, will determine what you like. But an average horn for, say, Lightning Bliss, it's about this big. And all it is is a really narrow curved oval that's incomplete and then you could add in the dents with lines that's pretty much it for wings now this is probably the most intimidating for people uh wings are kind of like hands or fingers and there's a lot of them going on so a lot of people just kind of rush it and do this and or they do this and it doesn't look good um the again the best thing you need to do is to line it out where you want the wing to go keep it simple and simple lines in this case for hasbro style primary wing feathers are really just curved little ovals like that and then as you go down the wings get a little bit smaller there's usually about five of them one two three four, five, and then it curves down, and then they, we have like a little extra wing additions right here. It's very, very simple. You just got to curve them up and down. If you need more help than that, you could always just line it out, know where the wings are going. So just skeleton it out if you're not sure, and then you could go into the detail afterwards. Simple as that. In this case, I've done it for so long, I've done it so many times that I basically just memorized it in my head. But yes, keep the shapes simple. I'm gonna just pop it over here. Obviously, be careful on the sides. If you want the big, then okay, but you want the little smaller. If you want to go Hasbro style, then shrink them down a little bit. They're not that big. And bam, now we got wings. Wings have never been really a challenge for me, but I could see why people would have that challenge because they are a lot like hands. Remember, just keep the shapes simple. You keep your shape simple, it won't be as t intimidating, and of course, practice makes perfect. Just practice, practice, practice. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right the first time. It happens. So, yeah, these are the horns. You got the wings, you got the eyes, you got the base of the body itself. Uh, this is basically a rough sketch of what you want done. And if you want to start cleaning it up in your program, you can, like I would like to do in Flash. In this case, we are going to go into the Lightning Bliss Puppet. You can see it is a massive difference between the rough and the vector. And that's because, again, this is just a rough. It was just to give you all an idea of how to draw a pony. This is the final result after you get your sketch down and after you do a lot of cleanup and whatnot. So yes, this right here, what you're looking at here is a vector 
pose of Liney Bliss, but it is also a puppet. What do I mean by puppet? Well, as you can see, there's a lot of movement going on around here. That's because she is a series of symbols that I am able to adjust at random. So we have many, many symbols here. You can see, and they're all in their own layer. So crown, which we don't actually use. That's for a prop. If I ever would decide to use one, we have her wing, the very first wing, which is at the front. Uh, we also have a second layer of head. So like that's her, a frontal head pose if I ever want to use it. We have her side head, which is in charge of the goggles, her first ear, her mane, the hair in the front, we got her mouth, then we got her first eye and the brow and the cheek and the eyelid. We got the second pair of goggles, which will drop down in the front here. And then we got the eye repeatedly and uh, the second eye, and then you have her horn, the hair that goes behind the horn, and you get the idea. These are all symbols working together to allow me to be able to pose her. Now, what I mean by symbols is that they're basically their own traits and they have several other frames going on for them. So let's say, let's go into the mouth. You can see that the mouth is a separation of nostrils, the happy mouth, a sad mouth, and uh, either or. So in this case, here's like her happy mouths, tongue sticking out. and the several mouth expressions that you can actually look up. Uh, there are several images on Google you can look up for mouth expressions. So some of these mouth movements are meant for words. So like this mouth could be used for I, A, I, U, or O. And this is for the happy expressions, but then you have the sad expressions that could also be used for anger. And these are the more expressives, like this one right here. These two, I'm, I came up with on my own. Um, this is like, in case like, she's being blown away or something. They're, these are funny expressions, but you get the idea. So this is for just the mouth. Ye the ear even has um, a, a layer of emotional movements here. You have the eyelid right here. The eyelid is able to do many expressions going up, down, curved, squint, sad, joy. Same with the eyebrow. Same with the, same with the front hoof. Look at, check out the front hoof. It could go up and go, go down. And if I wanted to, I could even adjust it. So I could take this symbol and adjust it to go a little bit further out. If I wanted to, yeah. These are, this puppet is strictly used for expression only. So if I wanted to make an expression of her being like really, really happy, well, I would have find the happy mouth and, uh, one second. And, uh, so, so I would find the right mouth post that to make her look really, really happy. So I like to use this mouth because it's the happiest of the bunch. Maybe she can look at you guys. So we're going to the eye symbol and make her look at you. Whoops. Make sure you are using the right layers to be doing this because if you're not, you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> but there, now she's looking at you guys. Hello. I am Lightning Bliss and I hope you are enjoying this tutorial. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically it in a nutshell. If you want to make your own puppet, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be very tedious at first. You got to know where to break everything down. I mean, even the back hoofs have their own lair. The back leg has its own lair. You got patches to cover it. Lightning Bliss's tail is in a weird position, but that's okay. Um, yeah, you get the idea. And it all starts with a rough sketch. 
rough sketches can be uh, adjusted and then they can be cleaned up and you can readjust them over and over and over until you get what you want and then when you're ready to vectorize everything you can just go and make a single vector in which case if this were not a puppet it would just look like this but it, this is a puppet so I can re-express it whenever I want this is why when I say if you want to make multiple vectors of your character without having to reposition and recolor over and over again, you should just make a puppet or you should purchase a puppet. So you can use the puppet to readjust and make vectors over and over and over. It beats having to do it this way because it's very tedious and you would have to do it over and over and over. You got to make sure that all the lines are fitting correctly. This is why I use a vector puppet. But yeah, if you're just doing this for artwork's sake, like you're just doing it for an image, then this is how you would go about it. Start with a rough sketch, get your lines down, clean it up, make it look nice, and voila, there you have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions or if you would like to leave a comment that you enjoyed the tutorial, I will be happy to reply or answer any questions you guys have. If you have any suggestions on what else I could do for a tutorial, please let me know. And thank you guys for listening. This is Lightning Bliss, signing out.